All right, so welcome to the Evolution Working Group meeting for March 3rd of the year 2021. Welcome to March. Um, and uh, today, uh, following our meeting in the general meeting yesterday, I thought maybe we might revisit our goals and metrics for development, see what, what work we have and what work we want to accomplish. And if there's, um, if this is the place um, to, to do that work, or if, if um, this working group needs to meet less frequently or uh, focus in a different way, I'm like open to all suggestions. Uh, uh, I'm sharing, so now I have to um, bring my sharing over here to find my chat. So I think, Kevin, you arrived after the last time I posted our meeting notes. All right, I have them. I just posted them again. Um, maybe let's just start with our place in the metric tracking spreadsheet. We have a number of metrics that are stated to be in progress and have something associated with them. And I guess branch lifecycle was released and change request acceptance ratio was released. Thought we released a third one, but maybe it was, I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was just two. So we released those. And the ones that are listed is in progress. And let me see if I can make this. So we have um, change request iteration. Apparently, uh, I don't know who owns that, but it's not set for public access. And now, can either can anybody in here click on that one? I am um, just giving a minute. Change request duration. I don't see this in my. Which one? Let me try. Uh... Duration. Uh, yeah, change request iteration. Iteration. Yeah, Matt's logged into the document, so it may be that he is. Uh, nope, I can't. Getting that request. It could be that um, somebody moved all of our documents into the chaos group and didn't leave the access intact. Um, we yeah, also I don't have access to. Um, this one we do ratio of issues to change requests. Um, this one is just a template. <coughs> and it's related to this GitHub issue. So kind of came upon this late last year, but it's, it's all, okay. So it's, uh, 
there is a start on that one. So started work and document. And I think the first one I looked at, well, I couldn't see it, so I don't know. Um, derivative, change request comments. This is another one I don't appear to have access to. I don't know. Yeah, I, I suspect these have been moved into the chaos. I may, um, Oh, yeah. We see evolution there. Maybe in the meeting minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know where the, um, I don't know who owns that document. It doesn't tell me who the request even went to. Let me just uh, jump over to my email and make sure it didn't go to me. I mean, Carter, Carter probably owns it. That could certainly be. And I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he would have altered his permissions, but uh, it might have been that he just created the document and we hadn't started working on it yet. So, yeah, uh, so that, he hadn't shared it. Yep. I concur with that possibility. Uh, change of post comments, same thing. Uh, change request issue mapping. All right, so we have some development that's occurred on that one. West access. Change request comment diversity. Another request access. So once we get access, we'll copy these over so we don't lose access. It seems that we have a couple that we could, that uh, we have access to that we could look at the ratio of issues to change requests. And uh, this is also the ratio of issues to change requests. And then change request issue mapping appears more, more well-developed. These, these all um, uh, so what I mean, when I look at the ones that we have listed as under uh, in progress, maybe uh, it looks like they're pretty much all up here except for change request comment diversity. Maybe we can um, take a little poll here. Let me clean up all, I'll change, I'll change to my full screen so we can go between apps. I just have to move some stuff off of it. A lot of stuff apparently. About that. Wow, I got a lot of crap open on this one screen. Good golly, Miss Molly. Close that. Close that. Close that. Jeez. All right. I just don't want you to need to see the whole clutter in my screen, but no reason. 
bunch of time up. Sorry. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing that. Share my whole screen. Can you see the spreadsheet still? Yep. Is it big and enough? the desktop. That's fine. Uh, I'm trying to trying to make it bigger. Oh, I see. Google Docs. It's trying to make it big enough uh, to see. Uh, and I thought, just actually, I could just use another. I'm going to go into the chaos community, and I'm going to create a folder called. Evolution WG share so I'm going to put um, I'm going to put this um, evolution chaos folder. I will also share that with you in chat. Oops. Yeah. So we can see the folder. So if we look at um, the metrics over here, um, do folks have a sense of which of the metrics that we have? Like I have opinions, but I don't wanna be the only opinion stater. So of these metrics, which do others think are most, uh, maybe a priority, for work and release? I would say the one in progress should be, we should prioritize them because there is some discussion or thoughts already in there. I'm not sure. That's my two cents. Um, in the documents themselves, you mean? Or it, what so you like uh, what I'm saying is those uh, metrics which are in progress should be prioritized first for like refining and making it ready for the release. Yeah, I agree completely. We've got eight of those right now. So I was thinking of those eight, which ones do folks see the greatest value in? Like I have I have thoughts, but I don't I, I would like this to not be Sean's thoughts tape recorded in the chaos meeting. Uh, Sean, why are those other ones in red. Um, so that's just the color coding for uh, essentially metrics we've named, but perhaps have not started to work on. Although I can't say for sure. Some of them probably do have document links. Like uh, okay. most of them don't have document links. And I think uh, like this one apparently have... does that I need to request access to. Um, but yeah, the ones the ones in. Uh, what is that yellow or is that yellow? It's not really yellow. It's like a beige, I guess. Yeah. Um, these are the ones that at other times we've said we want to work on first. And, you know, we have uh, four, five, six, seven, and then one down here to make eight. Okay. And uh, I thought if we made a list and stated our priorities, um, 
it would be helpful. Um, so I'm opening the floor for thoughts. I would say, go ahead, Renan. Change request commits, change request issue mapping. These are my preferences. Uh, yeah, well, we'll start with gets, that and then yeah. we can move it around. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually looking at this now. I'm really, I'm really surprised there aren't more metrics in code development activity, right? Because the, uh, these should be the, those should be the easiest metrics, right? These are the, the basic metrics. And maybe that's why we've been ignoring them. <laughs> yeah. They're not, I mean, a, they're not, they're not as fun, right? Well, I, I think also, um, they like code changes and code line changes uh -huh. um, and the change request acceptance one under efficiency, which arguably belongs under, it could be under activity, right? Yes, um, that's what I was thinking. Like right? activity and efficiency are both related to the activity in some sense. Yeah, I think it's the, the sort of duration ratios and statuses of acceptance or decline that makes them that at some point we decided to call them efficiency. But but I think like code changes and code changes lines are, there's a lot of what we do. And then the change request ones that we've released are significant indicators, like the most significant indicators that are widely used. Um, when it comes to change request commits and change request files, I think that is another it is that's so when we look at code changes and code change lines that's at the commit level and we can get a sense of what is changed in every commit effectively um in a change request if we look at the files and the commits then we we could get from, we could reference the commits in the code changes and code changes lines and we would be able to talk about the amount of work in great in enormous detail that is present uh, in a pull request. So I guess from I've always so I I think everything starts with evolution. So I agree. We are the most important and least attended working group. It's, so and, and so in a lot some of ways, it's just kind of like boring, right? Yeah. It's yeah, not, I, I think that was a little bit my point on why code development activity isn't built out as, as much as it should be, right? There's there's so much prior work on code development activity in the research communities. We could go through and we could define a bunch of metrics pretty quickly just based on prior work, right? In yeah. this area. Yeah. Uh, and, I, maybe, I, and maybe yeah. that's kind of what we need to do because by us by us doing that, we create the language and the term the, the language that the rest of the community can use. Yeah, I agree. Because at some times there is uh, not really a misalignment, but we are a bit not really in align with the research community. Because sometimes we go too much in the ground level and talk more about like other communities. And now I can even cite some a couple of uh, metrics that I cited in some of my work, but the kind of feedbacks I got from reviewers were not very funny, and I had to adapt and justify things, you know. And I even remember like this elephant factor and some other things that we got here. Yeah, a lot of people are really shy to call them somehow to list them how somehow in the research community. So if you yeah, see I'm like. I'm yeah. just opening up, um, uh, not, I, I swear this is not an act of blatant self promotion. Um, this is the soul heal paper that we have on auger and, uh, Kevin did, uh, a pretty substan I would say a very substantial, uh, amount of work. It's been, kind of, it's been described as impressive in the list yes the, the it, it is it's, it is an impressive <laughs> amount of work i'm sorry that was my self-promotion <laughs> but yeah it is it is really an impressive review of the literature on on how really evolution is measured if you look at a lot of these models 
a lot of these uh, things. They, Kevin's nice, done a nice job classifying them as sufficient scale, project culture, project quality, product quality, contextualized risk, license risk, and corporatized, corporatization and access to resources. But if you look at these number of, you know, I mean, these are things that are all in the literature and could easily be translated into evolution metrics. Yeah. yeah. No, um, those that are in the literature are really like what Kevin was saying earlier. We look into those and try to dive more in, into. Because my, my so when you say d dive more into the literature, no, 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 like in our base like what we are doing on the ground. I just gave like an example. Uh, recently, I submitted a paper for ICSI. It was accepted, but the people asked me to remove that word elephant factor. Why is it? it they said it, uh, I will try to look at those reviewers' comment. They said it was like a kind of language that is not kind of, and, and then when I tried to use uh, what Eleni and Tom Mens have proposed, which is the same kind of concept, that those one they said yeah this one is more appropriate so what what words did they, did they prefer to elephant factor uh just give me a sec let me look this uh, what i used in that paper here because we just released elephant factor under risk I believe. yeah because yeah. you have the boss factor you have elephant some people it's just depending on how you know some conferences like no, we, we, yeah, yeah. i wrote i wrote elephant factor and i actually rough like i looked up the history of it and like it's it's more interesting than you might think yeah the, the I, I, yeah even like the the thing i saw the the, the name that uh, uh, tom Mens used is the same concept but sometimes i understand ixi is like the premier they don't want to put something there and people start criticizing it so they really want to see how much people have reason about it you know yeah, the, yeah. i think it's a i would say that ICSI is like any other uh, discourse community in that they have a language that they've adopted for referring to common things, just like chaos is adopted language and definitions for metrics. When I was talking to some academic computing uh, folks earlier today, working on a project called Fair Software, mm -hmm. um, you know, I explained there's really two things that chaos provides. One is when you go to measure and understand software health and sustainability or production, people have argued about what a commit is for years. We're not saying we're right, but we're consistent. And what the definitions provide is a consistent definition so that when somebody else wants to measure something else, they don't need to like to argue about the definition for three weeks. Yeah. Um, so, but, but if you, did you find the name of what they call it? Well, let me just, I, I was listening to, let me just go back to my review, then I will okay. be able to, to trace it. Uh, but I mean, uh, part, of my, part of my point earlier was that I think there are some, there are some basic metrics that are just, that are just going to be easy. Uh, and we need to, and we probably just, we need to get them defined. And the, the change request co commits up there is one of them. Yep. So and the number of commits, the number of comments, the the number of files. Those are those are really basic metrics that we need to define so that so that they can be used in other places. I guess. Um, what there's also um, change request. We learned that change request review comments are a different thing as well. In GitHub, yes. Um, and are that's, they Git, not... that's GitHub specific, though. I, I don't know if it, I don't know if that's the case in GitLab or in the other platforms. Yeah, uh, this, because uh, because so GitHub is primarily what I'm familiar with. I think of them as different. Uh, I had always thought, candidly, that that change request that review comments were would be included in the change request or pull request in GitHub API comment. Mm -hmm. um AP, api and i was surprised that they weren't um and so auger now includes them as a separate table excellent um so okay. and actually, and say, yeah and I'll, yeah go okay. ahead they uh, just said uh, this elephant uh, 
factor which I explained it more uh, broadly like explaining the elephant share the reviewer said such terms should be avoided and okay. better yeah should be avoided they say short informal informal term they use it like it is an informal term should be avoided so so then not now only, it's not only the term elephant factor but it is what it measures which is how much of a project depends on a single enterprise they think should not be measured at all no it should be measured you understand but like what i was saying is that it's not something that we should really like over worried but if we see what the academic has already used like the names we could now use that and then i don't know if we want to keep the elephant share we just reference that yeah i i, I would say uh if so, reviews are not reviews are not always good <laughs> yeah so but, but i'm, I'm i want to get not necessarily true yeah <laughs> but i, I just want to understand armstrong yeah because are you, the, are you suggesting that measuring so they're the advice of the ICSI community and is it the ICSI community or mining software repositories? Well, it's ICSI, um, MSR is a co-located event most often because ICSI yeah. is like the premier. Right, right. Yeah, right. The, yeah. mining software repository is usually a co-located event. Like to my opinion, what we measured is not really like, it's not bad. It's just that sometimes, to my opinion, it's like, if you are sending a paper also to TXZ and EMXZ, they just, they just want to be sure that what goes in should not be revoked by another researcher later time. That discredit this kind of journal. So to me, it's more of their reputation than the metrics itself. Right. Now, how much people have cited this might be that's like the first paper coming in that they want to accept that is carrying this kind of terminology. Are they really sure it was well thought sure. of and things like that? So to my opinion, this is the kind of things that because it was a minor, it was just a rebutter. So like, um... so if we could see any kind of citation that captures that concept that we are worrying about, we could now say, okay, like, this is like what we are talking about. Then we go out along with our explanation. So we are contextualizing it at that point. Yeah, essentially, it's a sort of an academic custom of citing the uh, often for a term like for a concept that we think of as elephant factor there is some canonical paper somewhere where it's it's um uh developed where, where it initially uh so community-based production what do we know about developers who participate this is the most cited article Yeah, this is really just a very high level article, I think. But I, and, and so since they probably, I think, I think I've seen Chris Tsumami before. So, so I guess if there, if we can learn from, maybe you could reach out to Tom Benz, um, Armstrong and asking yeah. for basically what we're talking about is is there one organization that's running this project and, and making most of the commits and contributions and in that case um the elephant factor you know people want to know that organiz like organizations want to know yeah um, I agree it's a it's a real serious concern if yeah. if one organization decides that they're no longer going to support a project and they are the main supporter of that project people want to know that there's only one organization um, yeah. that, that's a risk because this this elephant factor is hugely practiced like it's a denominate a, a very strong baseline in open stack ecosystem but i even try to reach out to see if they have a solid documentation that states that clearly that they don't want an individual company to have a monopoly because yeah. I, I did uh, an interview study there. So one of the top uh, VP for sales mentioned this couple of times. 
but I do not really find any concrete documentation, like official documentation, that really states that clearly. I would have just cited that paper and said, okay, this is something that they are using to prevent, let's say, a company like Canonical Red Hat, IBM, to carry it, this share. Yeah, I think I think Tom Menz or um, some of the folks at Grimoire Lab, I'm thinking of Jesus and, and Daniel. Yeah. Those, those three folks, I, I think, have been involved in parallel in the academic software engineering community mm -hmm. and the production of metrics and software for metrics um, yeah. for for longer than I have. I, I have a broader set of interests that has now focused the last five years on open source software, but I think they've spent much longer and are likely to know the the history and perhaps the ICSI, the canonical ICSI paper for Elephant Factor. Yeah. I think that's what we're looking for and whatever they call it there i i have no problem changing our metric name to that because okay. elephant factor is not something that intuitively reveals what the thing is right yeah um so i gave you an action and i think jesus has an article because i even tried to cite that article i saw it on open source uh website but then it was not really it was not really inspired I by the teacher. I can't remember his last name. I can't uh, good question. It's G something. Yeah. Now, is it Gonzalez? No, 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 sorry. No, 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 it's close to that, though. It's not. Uh, yes. <laughs> How can I forget this? What's so the bad. question? uh just how to spell uh jesus's last name i, I know it's uh J -O -N -Z -L -E -Z. J -O -N. sorry say that again g o n z a l e z dash barahona yep yeah okay <laughs> All right, let me take, let me just look for him and find his profile. If I actually say I, it by. I think that was this uh, open source thing by Red Hat, not really an academic paper. He even talked about the elephant factor and I think boss factor and cited some other things. That was really interesting, that paper, that uh, article. Yeah, I thought the term was coined by uh, uh, one of the Red Hat people. Uh, yeah. What's his name? Uh, oh. But if it's not a, if it's not a term that... Uh, Okay. Well, let's let's suspend this discussion. I don't. I think we can leave that as an action. Okay. Item. I think I just uh, saw one of the article on the this one here. If we can click this link, this is where the term was really coined. That I started explaining, but he wrote an article. Yeah. Yep. I I found I I've, I've seen this before. Yeah. Then anyway. I think he wrote another th this thing to relate this why he cited this paper, this article as well, but it was just this kind of article. But but the the XE community doesn't doesn't like the use of the term elephant factor. What might be if we have because like if we have a uh, like what I think. You said Kevin did like this thing for So Hill. If we have a paper like this where we can, or something, a thing like that, you, that, that you can cite. Yes, yeah. might be that one will be more, 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 will have more weight. I forget, is Elephant Factor in there? I don't think Elephant it is. Factor is a released metric under risk. No, in the So Hill paper. Um, I don't think it is. I think Bus Factor uh, is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and the uh, and nope. I think nope. I was I was confused as well. I think pony pony factor was a red hat thing. Uh, elephant factor 
I don't remember where that came from. And and pony factor is essentially the same thing, right? Yeah, as at uh, no, as uh, it's essentially the same thing as bus factor, but less bus gruesome. Factor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bus factor has always struck me as a rather gruesome name. Yeah, I think the 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 idea is that you're it's more rather than uh, rather than focusing on the the death or whatever the leaving it's more right. that the uh you're a pretty pretty pony who is the uh okay fair enough center of attention so i think um uh armstrong i threw into the notes uh to ask you to just you know i i mean maybe give an email to tom Menz and jesus and and ask them you know from an ICSI perspective We've used, we've released fat, we've released metrics called elephant factor and bus factor. Are there um, canonical papers that call these things something different that might be more appropriate okay. and descriptive names for the the, the related chaos metrics? Um, those are okay. those are clearly very colloquial names for metrics that do not. You know, when someone sees it for the first time and they're new to software, open source software metrics will not know what that means until they read the metric. Like the the actual name is not inherently descriptive to a to a newcomer. So if they have a term or a, a lot, even if it's a longer term, and it probably is, I I, I think you know uh, we should consider changing the name of our metrics. Was this a comment you got from the reviewer or from the editor? Sorry, no, for XC, it's like the meta reviewer. Which the meta reviewer said that. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it is reflective of the community. Okay. Yeah, the meta. Yeah, that's yeah. Meta, yeah, I, I think when meta reviewers ask you to not use language, I, it means that the, the community doesn't accept that language. I think XC, I, I they have done a lot of the work. Um, on impact of software engineering. So ICSI is certainly a, a place to to look for, but especially when we have a metric metric names like bus factor and elephant factor that a newcomer will just not understand at all. If they have a more descriptive thing, they call it. I'm cool. I think I think there may be some wisdom to renaming it. Or or I think this last maybe giving it a subtitle. The last link, the last link that I sent is the one that Jesus uh, wrote on this open source thing. I found it. It's well, like I mean, it's well reflected upon. So it's just something that we could keep together, and then we try to see. I'll, I'll ask them to direct, as you, you suggest. But we just keep these resources. We are really. Jesus's yeah. article was a uh, was a blog, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is it. This is Pony Factor. Does does he get to elephant at all? If you look the table be beneath, you see pony and elephant factor uh, for several falls. You see, so he he computed okay. the elephant factor there. Okay. Um. So so we um. I think I think this actual open source dot com article. Uh, if we don't if we don't cite it in pony and elephant factor, we ought to because it does explain. It does explain things. We may actually want to think about adding the pony factor as an alternative name to the definition of uh, bus factor. Bus factor, yeah. Well, I think it's a less grotesque name. Uh, yeah, or bus. What's the other one they call it? Truck. Truck factor. <laughs> truck factor. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, these names, but like a lot of things, if if you look at the Unix command line name those came out of people dropping acid in Berkeley in the 60s. And uh, similarly, some person, probably a guy, came up with this in a lab um, and it stuck. So yeah. if, if we can provide language that is more um, it's uh, funny accessible, to, I, I'm, uh, I'm thinking especially of the newcomers. I actually, I have some interviews with a, a few Kind of open source old timers, and uh, I've heard uh, I've heard a couple stories about uh, hanging out in Berkeley with the Grateful Dead. Yeah, no, it's um, I mean, 
It, Unix is interesting. It was co-developed by acid-dropping hippies in Berkeley and straight-laced Bostonians um, at MIT and working for the Defense Department. And that's how it came into being. And a lot of the things that are still in Linux started there. And so very odd things. Um, anyhow, side conversation. We've got three minutes left. I think um, we got an action item. Um, I think I think uh, we created this document. Uh, anyone with the link can edit it. Just going to put it in our notes as a discussion to date, but I think then as well. Uh, I mean, I don't object to the order of these five at all. Um, I, I think they actually, I mean, I can, we could have esoteric debates, but is there anyone that thinks that, like, I think change request commits is kind of a obvious first one and issue mapping seems like an obvious second one. Um, three and four, I could argue either way. Um, and I think five is probably a subclass of three. Of so, so change request review comments is probably a subclass of change request comments at the end of the day, because I think, uh, another one, to, another one to consider adding there would be actually reviews itself. So that the number of reviews. Number, number uh, we cannot capture with the iteration, the, the request change iteration, because when we come count the, the iteration, it, it also captures the the reviews, the number of reviews. Or is, are you talking about the aggregated reviews? Is that is that a metric, Kevin, that isn't beige today? I I don't think that metric exists. What's it currently. called? I would I would call it reviews, and then maybe there's a second one that's number of reviewers. No, we have reviews defined. They're called change requests. No, but a, a change request is. Oh, change request is review. A, yeah, a change request review. Exactly. Uh, OK. And then you also want us to know to capture the number of reviewers. Yeah, so the change request yeah. reviewers and change request review, because as as Sean was discussing earlier, in GitHub anyway, change request reviews are separate entities within a change request, right? Yeah. I think okay. I see where you are coming from because sometimes it's also good to know the, num the, the number of people that looked into a review that can really help to avoid a uh, bird slipping in. For example, if one person is just the reviewer, what are the chances that he can critically capture things like the, the birds or some, some bad smells and things like that? Yeah, I would so Kevin these reviewer related ones I would add under code development process quality so I could make an argument for efficiency and development activity as well yeah um, since change requests are under process quality it, it would seem that these reviews of them would it, we would be consistent with what we've decided previously well, although i guess the efficiency is could I mean, does anyone is anyone feeling strong one way or another i guess i was thinking process quality initially i was too uh, armstrong do you or Bernard, do you have a now if we go with process what what are we the de uh, what is our definition of process here so it's process quality and so, so it's a focus area right so. yeah the the presence or absence of a review and the number of reviewers before a change request is accepted and merged i think oh, okay. are, talking, are you talking about the code development process yes okay okay i see uh, what you... so isn't efficiency a process quality then so I think efficiency is different. I think the efficiency metrics are focused on 
uh, essentially how quickly does a project move? Yes. I think they, it has an influence on how many people, how, how people stay with the project or not. For example, if their change request is accepted, mm -hmm. we know people are more likely to stay. We know if change requests are closed more quickly, people are more, more likely to stay engaged. And so um, process, process quality, quality is about the presence of reviews and what their content is and stuff. And there's probably a direct correlate to software quality. There is. I, I believe there is. There's in my, I'm a software engineering, I teach software engineering and I, strongly believe there is a strong correlation between the review process or lack of therein and the quality of the released product. I'm gonna put them here and we can, cause I'm hearing, I'm not hearing strong objections at least. Raise them now or forever hold your peace. Fine. <laughs> and also we only have one metric under there, so. Yeah, let's build it out. I mean, it's a dumb reason to make a decision, but I think I think change requests Reviews. reviewers and change request review comments. Comments, which can be distinct. On this reviewer, I had this objection of uh, what you call, uh, what kind of reviewer? Is it like uh, uh, diversity of the reviewers or it's like equity of the reviewers or? Re reviewers are usually maintainers. So okay. to be a code reviewer, you typically uh, okay. have to be a maintainer. And Kevin, is this a drop down? Is do I have to copy this? You here? have to copy that. Yep. Uh, so, question for you. And I guess, do I have? To, should I have copied the whole line? Uh, yes. Yeah. Actually. All right. That's no just, problem. I'll just. I'll just copy the now. formatting. Just. I would say copy the formatting cool. and. Uh, there. Are, yeah. We'll yeah. see if that works. Uh, All right. Yeah. And we know these are not released. Do we want to state them as being in progress, like we're going to actively work on them? Well, we just listed them that way, so. We can work on them. Um, and then. And so, a question for you, though. So, uh, so change request comments. Yes. Does that include normal comments and review comments in our definition? I think it includes. So comments can exist separately from review comments mm -hmm. and, and review comments can exist within comments and how that is tracked is a platform decision. I know for a fact there are different data endpoints at, on GitHub. Right. Um, I don't know the process or the API calls on GitLab. Um, but let me just do a quick Google here. GitLab change request reviews API. I'm just wondering if we need to address that somewhere. And if we do need to address it, do we just do we just make a comment in change request comment saying that this project yeah. merge requests. Approvals, merge request approvals. I think we would have to do a little deep, uh, a little bit of a dive into the API for yeah. GitLab to answer that question. It, it certainly looks as though you may be able to extract chain change request review comment separately. Um, but it's obviously unclear from a 30 second overview. 
Okay. Um, well, just something to think about when we're writing it because the uh, there is a, there is a situation where all comments could be grouped together and it would be interesting to understand all comments within a change request. Uh, but at the same time, we, I think they have to be thought of as separate entities as well. And maybe that's just a sentence or two in change request comments that says, you know, you can include review comments in these in this, however, it's there's a it's a it's another call or so um, unless somebody else wants to volunteer, I'll take that as an action item uh, for the next meeting to look into the GitLab API and and figure out where we stand there. Hearing no volunteers. Yeah, but, I'm so uh, the, with the metrics release coming up. I'm not. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm well, avoiding and, volunteering for anything right now. I, I spend a I spend a fair amount of time in the GitLab and GitHub API, so um, uh, this is not a problem. This is this is not a lot of time for me. Uh, this is my last chaos meeting till like one and a half week. I'll not be attending any of the meetings. Okay, so you're you're going deep. You're taking a deep dive. On take, <laughs> taking comps, are you yes. leaving us? All right, well, yeah. are you leaving us? No, no, I'm not no. leaving, I'm not joining any meeting till one and a half week because he's I have my the, comps. He's in the PhD gate at the oh, University of Omaha called Comprehensive Exam. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's one of the ways we torture doctoral students. Um, oh, don't ask. <laughs> it's 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 you know, it, the, what here, it, it, this process exists because when we grant a PhD from our, in the institution, we want the folks who have our PhD to be able to go into the world and defend their ideas without being defensive. To yeah. ask questions instead of getting into arguments to, to really have reasoned intellectual debates and so the comprehensive exam is practice for how do I generate an idea, accept the criticism and respond to it. Um, it's, it's part of, I think, I think, but well, first of all, if you don't know your stuff, you're just going to fail. Right? Yeah. So part of it is knowing your stuff, but part of it is also indoctrinating you into the process of entering the world of academics, uh, knowing the language and practices of expertise. Yeah. I totally agree. So yep. I think if you think about it that way, Vinod, any intimidation you'd feel should fall by the wayside. Yeah. Um, I'll be emailing your dean at the end of this meeting to say that there's no way that you should pass comprehensive exams. So that should be. <laughs> <laughs> I am utterly kidding, but but um, <clears throat> totally not serious there. So, so, I think I on our folks, next... folks in Europe are lucky. They don't. They don't usually have it. But not America is a must. It's a compulsory. Yeah. Um, I, I so I think the first thing um, at our next meeting will begin work on on um, change request commits. Like that. That can be our first thing. Is we we okay. spend some time on that uh, and then just sort of charge forward and start using these meetings more as working meetings. Yep. Um, so uh, uh, I think that that I'm going to say we have concluded our our evolution working group meeting for March 3rd, 2021. Our next meeting is on St. Patrick's Day. I encourage everyone to wear green. And I will see you all at some other chaos meeting soon, except for you, Vinod. <laughs> but yeah. I hope there's a live stream of you working on your comprehensive exam. I think I think that would be an no way. Yeah, or a, maybe per, perhaps a daily TikTok or something. <laughs> good luck, Vinod. Yeah, good luck, Vinod. You'll do well. Thank you. All usually, right. what what uh, semester do you usually uh, do your comp exam at? 
your university? It's it's is it the first like year semester. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's in the make it second year. year, end of the second year. Okay, so. with, with us is the, the first year, the end of the first year. I'm going to stop recording. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs>